take a week off and some interesting things happen with the market data. I'm not saying that buyers should be cheering by any stretch of the imagination, but inventory is moving in the, we'll call it right direction, if you're a buyer that is. In this video, we're gonna go over the single family and condo market stats in the state of Massachusetts. And we're also going to do a quick interest rate update and we'll talk about some current relevant recent event. We're gonna take a look at the inventory levels in a moment and how it could spell some good news for a buyer. But the bad news, well, the market's crazy again. It's multiple offer situation after multiple offer situation. It's time to brush off those tricks of two years ago because that's the difference between writing 20 offers before actually securing a house and writing maybe possibly only five. My buyers found a house that they really liked. It was listed for $799,000, so a pretty good price range, above average for that town. My clients went up to eight hundred and fifty dollars They weren't even in the conversation. 16 offers with a winning bid having a nine handle in front of it. The agent you choose to work with will ultimately make a huge difference. And make sure that you have a home buyer meeting where you go over the process and most importantly, the strategy that you can utilize to drastically decrease the life of searching for a house and putting offers in on that. Many houses. Oh, and start the search early. If your lease is up in the next six months, then you really want to start this process now. Lower interest rates would spell a disaster for home buyers when it comes to pricing, so please interest rates don't go down this spray. Hi, I'm Jeff Chuck. I'm a recovering investment back returned real estate agent and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Also, I'm looking to buy houses. Let me know if there are any houses that you're aware of that need a lot of wealth, tender love and care. Friend, family members, or random house that you drive by every day and it's just in shambles. The uglier, then the better. If you know of one, then please shoot me an email or visit cashofferma.com. And sorry, just one more bit of news. We are now offering listing services of 1% for home sellers. That's 1% compared to the so-called standard of 5 to 6% when you sell a house. would love to chat with you about how we can save you possibly tens of thousands of dollars in real estate fees. That's if you're looking to sell, that is. Now, let's jump into it and get into the single-family market stats. This is what we would expect for this time of year. Inventory being at a yearly low, but level. But get ready, because this is when we start to see the spring inventory start to build. Inventory was up this week to 2,724 single-family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. We now have 3.5% less homes on the market today than we did just 28 days ago. But the story to be told is the year-over-year -year inventory comparisons. We started the year below the inventory levels of 2021 and 2023. 367 units below the 2023 inventory levels. But slowly and surely, we've been closing that gap. We have only 13 fewer single-family homes on the market today than we did today back in 2023, and 822 more single-family homes than were on the market back in 2022. This was the so-called good news. If you're a home buyer, you need and want to see more of this, a lot more of this. But it's great news for the market, in my opinion. We can thank the inventory bill to the slightly higher new listing activity. We listed 624 single-family homes this week. That's 61 more units or 10.8% more than the same week in 2023. So that is now four consecutive weeks where we have been listing more houses than in 2023. And I'd love to see this trend just continue. Now that four week rolling average is 627 units. So we're right in line with the average for new listings in, well, the past four weeks, that is. The listing of more houses while sales levels are pretty much in line with 2023. That trend continues. We had 622 homes go under agreement. This was a 14 units or 2.1% less than the same week last year, but 666 single family homes went under agreement. Now that four week rolling average at 703 units, but the dip in pendings does make a lot of sense as it was President's Day weekend. So when compared to last year's market, new listings, they were up by nearly 11%, while under agreements were down by 2%. There were 401 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $675,000 and a median sales price of $555,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 7.8% as there were 435 single family homes that sold this week last year for an average sales price 
of $667,000. Lots of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market. With the closer that you get to zero, the more aggressive and stronger the seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory actually moved up to 1.31 months from last week's 1.2 months. 1.31 months this week is compared to the 1.28 months this week last year. A very strong seller's market. Real quick, my shameless plug, I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, onto the condo market. The better market to be a home buyer in is, well, the condo market. We have 1,841 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this is 4.8% more than the inventory levels of just 28 days ago. But this graph, this is where that you can really see how this market is, well, more enjoyable of a marketplace than compared to the single family properties. We now have 137 more units on the market today than today last year and 400 more units than compared to the inventory levels of 2022. 137 units is an inventory gap high for the year. So that's great news if you're a buyer. There were 381 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 354 units. The 381 units listed was 41 units or 12% more than the 340 condos that came on the market this same week back in 2023. It's the increase in activity in new listings that has us seeing this inventory build. It's slow, but it's happening. And it's good, like I said, great news for a buyer. This week, we put 340 units under agreement. This 340 condo sales was 16 units or 4.5% shy from last year's numbers. We put 356 condos under agreement. Now that four week rolling average is 330 units. So pretty much right in line with that average. So 12% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling four and a half percent fewer condos. There were 198 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $646,000 and a median sales price of $480,000. The same week last year, there were 211 condos that sold. So sales levels, they were off by about 6%. Months of inventory, that actually ticked up to 2.19 months from last week's 2.02 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels of 1.85 months that we saw this time last year. Any chance you could just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, just place that YouTube algorithm. Just makes a huge difference to me as well as the channel. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider. Inventory rates have been pretty flat for the week, but in the last month, they've freed up nearly a quarter of a point for a conventional loan and nearly a half point for a 30 year FHA loan. That's a 5% decrease in home buying affordability. This spring rate reduction that everyone was hoping for, it's not going to happen. The Fed's not going to decrease the Fed fund rate in March. And I personally don't think the consumer price index, it's not going to be a great reading. That's just my opinion. Don't get me wrong. This is just my real world awareness, but prices, they certainly have not come down and I continue to see them go up and up and up and up. And by the way, I don't want them to go down. I don't want rates to go down. We're, we're already dealing with homes going well over a hundred grand more than asking price. Could you imagine what this market would look like if interest rates were 5%? It would be insane. And we really don't need a hotter market. We are already the hottest market in the country. You heard that right. Check this out. The Market Action Index, which is done by Autos Research, found that Boston, Cambridge, Quincy, Mass Market had a reading of 60.59 and was the top ranked market in the country for activity. San Francisco was number two, which quite frankly really shocked me. And here's the kicker, the punch to the gut. Providence, New Bedford, Fall River Market, that came in at number three in the country. I mean, that was kind of telling us something that I feel like we already knew, right? But there's proof to that pudding. This is interesting and something that very few people actually really know about, but quite frankly, it could be big news, especially if you're buying or currently own in the suburbs. There's a 2021 Massachusetts law, the MBTA Communities Act, that requires communities to allow multifamily housing near public transit by right. Well, the town of Milton does not agree. They had a zoning bylaw, which passed in the December town meeting, but was just overturned in the February 14th referendum. Now, the thought is that more multifamily housing, it's going to create more supply and thereby decrease pricing. And this is the state forcing multifamily housing on suburban single family communities. Well, the attorney general is now suing the town of Milton 
and quite frankly, let the standoff begin. Campbell is quoted as saying that the MBTA community's law was enacted to address our region-wide need for housing. In compliance with it, well, that's mandatory. The law requires cities and towns with an MBTA station or towns that border a community with a station to have at least one zoning area that allows multifamily housing by right. Well, Milton has four stations on the Mattapan Trial Line and falls into the law's rapid transit category and had a deadline of December 31st to adopt the compliant zoning district. Now, during the December town hall, they agreed to add six sub-districts that would essentially allow for, but not guarantee, the construction of a total of 2,461 new housing units. The people that shot this down, they got a point, I think. Imagine what an additional nearly 2,500 units would do to traffic in the area and the pressure that it would put on the schools. Communities that do not comply with this law will not be eligible for a number of state funding programs. It will be at a disadvantage for other competitive grants. And the state, well, they've already rescinded a $141,000 grant. And it looks like Rentham will join the sweepstakes with Holden not being far behind. And I'm sure there's going to be many more towns that follow as towns begin to stand up against the state. Straight up, not in my backyard mentality here. Elections, they've got consequences, and this is a situation where you get what you vote for, quite frankly. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, my name's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy a home in the next 90 or 9 days, it doesn't really matter. And I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I would truly appreciate you passing along my contact information as it would be a true pleasure to help them as well. You can visit uh, youtuberealestateagent.com, just fill in some information and then we'll reach out to you or you can find all of my contact information in the description below down there, reach out to me directly. But until next time.